Well, we made it. It took us 45 minutes or so, baby May May. We're gonna have to find us a shortcut. How'd you do back there? I didn't hear a peep from you. Woo! <laughs> look at that hair. Look at that hair. It's the I don't care hair. Yeah, look at that baby. Let's go see, let's go find Koi. Let's go find Koi. Yeah. Hey everybody, Camper Van Kevin here. How are y'all doing today? Hmm. Me, I'm real good. Well, uh, as you can see, I'm back to my uh, my old look. Not saying it's my best look, but it's my old look. Um, I grew my hair out. Uh, I had a great uh, hairstylist barber in Quartzsite, but when I moved to Sholo, I didn't have. Uh, couldn't find that's not true I didn't look for one uh, so I went to uh, baby May May's uh, groomer <laughs> no that's not true I use my, my own clippers it's just uh it's just easier cooler I use less water and hmm, I prefer the look over hair but uh, we're not talking about hair today um, I wanted to talk to you about one of my biggest mistakes, just huge regrets, one of them, that I have in my life. So to tell you that, I have to tell you this. Back in, I think it was 2007, I lost my daddy in a car wreck. Uh, log truck ran into the side of the truck my mother was driving in front of Walmart in Athens. Uh, killed my father. Um, messed my mom up pretty good. Uh, she survived. She's still alive. Um, but growing up, my father, he was mighty fond of his old-timer pocket knife. Ever since I can remember being a little boy, he had a, uh, gosh, it had to be vintage back then, uh, small, about yay size, pocket knife. Um, when he died, I got his ring, and I got his pocket knife. Now, a lot of people, they don't understand uh, people's attachments to things. But at least in the South, many people of that generation and of this generation as well, but especially the, my father's generation, were very fond of pocket knives and uh, firearms. Now, my daddy, he had a couple of firearms that he'd had a long time, but he, um, that just wasn't his thing. He didn't really hunt. Uh, he kept a few around for protection. Um, but his pocket knife, however, that was one of his most favorite things. Change my... Now, I remember... He must have kept the sharp. Now I remember he must have kept the sharpest pocket knife in the world. He was constantly rubbing it on that soapstone, and he showed me over and over and over, a thousand times, how to keep a knife sharp. He also did. He also showed me a thousand times how to keep my shoes polished. But we're talking about knives today. So when he died, I got his pocket knife. I knew how much it meant to him. I said, I'm going to carry that pocket knife like my daddy. I 
I'm usually really good at keeping up with things. I lost it. I lost my daddy's pocket knife. And I know that sounds... It's, it's ate me up inside. It's, uh, it's really bothered me for a long time. But what do you... What do you do? How do you fix it? Schlage or Schrade have been making pocket, have been making knives for a hundred years before they went out of business. And I think old timer, they started the old timer line in about 1960. And um, my dad, he he went on and on about the blade on this knife. And so that's kind of where this story is going, okay? He said it was a, a high carbon steel blade. Now, I looked on uh, the internet trying to find his exact knife, and this is as close as I could come to it. Um, but his blade had turned black, and he kept an edge on it that... Mm -mm -mm -mm. I think he did it maybe as a nervous tick. <laughs> but my daddy always had a sharp pocket knife. And I haven't even really been able to find... Well, the, one, the picture looked similar, but the blade wasn't as black. So why are you telling us about your daddy's pocket knife? Well, where, where is this story going? Bear with me. However, my father had three other pocket knives that he was fond of. It wasn't his, uh, it's kind of, I'm going to look a little show and tell this morning. Is that okay? It wasn't his, uh, his most favorites, but let me show them to you. There are three. Excuse my fingernails. I'm not a, a hand model. I have seen him carry this case knife before. And uh, the tip was like this when I got it. So he would always heat it up with his uh, match if he had to dig out a thorn or something in his hand or my hand or whatever. So I think he did a little uh, operation with that one. Here's this next one. Now I realize not everybody here is into pocket knives. If you're not into knives, you might not like this video. And that's okay. But this is his case. And he was very fond of this, this knife. And this blade resembles his old-timer blade very close in color. If, if, if It was even darker. Don't know the year, but I do know it's got some age on it. And this is his other old timer. Let me open it up. Opening it up, I have to be careful. Look at the the edge he could put on a knife. Focus, baby, focus. Schrade. You know, Schrade went out of business in 2004, 2005. And uh, I don't know what is going on with my phone, my camera. Anyway, they went out of business in 2005, and so if you have any Schrade, come on, any Schrade blade, old timer or anything after 2005, guess what? It's made in China. And since we're talking pocket knives, I'm going somewhere with this, I'll show you my everyday carry. I was at like a sportsman warehouse. Um, about 10 years ago, I guess, and they had this Bear's Grill Gerber knife. Now, I've seen Bear's Grill on, on TV. I'm not a huge fan, not against him either. If there's nothing else to watch, I'll watch it. But it was a Gerber, and I bought this knife for under 20 bucks. I have put this knife 
Oh, now that now the camera starts to work right. I have put this knife through its paces. It's only been sharpened once by my friend in New Mexico that I've got the purple tiny house at. I use this in my kitchen. Is that rust? It can't be rust. It's got to be something else. Yeah, something else. Yeah. Just this is the knife that I keep on me. And uh, with the orange right here, I thought, well, maybe I won't lose this one. Fantastic knife. Gerber makes a, a really, really nice blade. So this has been my go-to knife for 10 years. So there's the knife. I will not carry these, these, these other knives. I keep them in my safe. I will not carry these knives ever again. I'll just take them out and look at them. But the other day in Snowflake, I met a man. Let me get his card out of my wallet. I met a man named uh, Koi. And he had some knives on a display table. In fact, I made a video on it. Watch this uh, clip right here. A lot of artists here today. But here's a... Here's a knife maker. You're, you're Koi? Uh, that's me. You make all these yourself? I do. Good deal, good deal. What, uh, what's the best steel to make a knife out of? Is it Damascus? That's the main part. But, uh, well, actually, if you use, I actually like 440C stainless. 440C stainless? Yeah, not 440, 440C. 440C? 440 is what you buy at Walmart places that don't hold a good edge. Okay. 440C does. But a good quality Damascus blade is just as good. It's, the, it's just the advantage of 440C, you never have to worry about it rusting. And it also holds just as good as as a good quality Damascus blade. So do you have a website? No. You don't have a website, but no. you do have a card here. I do. So they, uh, if someone sees something on my video that they like, you, you give Koi a call here. Let's see if it's focusing in. I think it's focusing, so I'm going to show his work right here. If you see something that you like, you give Koi a call. How long have you been doing this? Oh, probably 25 to 30 years. Yeah. So you've made one or two. Yeah. That's beautiful. You do the woodwork on the handle? I do everything. I don't make the blades anymore. I used to make everything with blades too. I had to stop forging due to the disease called old age. You got old? <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, that means you did everything right getting here. Yeah. What does this knife cost here, Mr. Coy? Yeah, that one is 120 bucks. Isn't that beautiful work? Comes with a sheath? Yeah, every knife comes with a leather sheath. I'll show some extra work. Oh, wow. Oh, that's plastic? No, actually, it's, it's a resin. A resin. This in the center is a pine cone. Oh, it's a pine cone. They split the pine cone in half, and then they put it in a mold under pressure. They shoot that resin around the pine cone. Yeah, I've seen them do that. This is on Damascus steel. Yeah, that's very high quality Damascus. I buy that blade from a company in Alabama. Alabama. And there's 416 layers, three kinds of metal. 416 layers, three types of metal. Pine cone of all things. What's this knife cost here, sir? Two twenty-five. Two twenty-five. Well, I would like the most expensive one I pick up. <laughs> Actually, that's a bargain price. Most places you would probably spend around three fifty to four hundred bucks. Now I really liked that pine cone uh, epoxy resin handle knife. Boy, I liked it. I liked it a lot. In fact, I went back the next week and it was still there and I almost bought it. Um, then I went back the next week and Koi 
had made uh, another knife. Now he had a bunch on that table that I really liked, but when I saw this knife, I just I just couldn't walk away. Sitting out in the sun, this blue handle was just shimmering. It's an epoxy resin blue. It has some metallic flake in it. This is a type of grape wood. They take this wood and epoxy and they vacuum form it. And they make knife blanks out of it. And Koi, he's been making knives for 30 years. He's 78 years young. He's 78 years young. And he turned his hobby into a living. And when I saw this, I had to buy it. Number one, I liked it a lot. Number two, I wanted to support this guy. Now, he was telling me about these blades, and he used to make his own blades, forge his own blades, but since he's got a little older, gosh, my, my fingers look horrible, my busting up, working out here on the property, he, uh, he buys his uh, Damascus blades out of Alabama. So Alabama Damascus made this uh, knife blank. And there are 416 folds to make this. It's mixed with three different alloys, three different metals. And it's, it's folded 416 times. Now, it's not stainless steel, so I can get a touch of rust on it. So I've got to take care of that little bit right there. It's just par for the course with Damascus. But a finer blade more than likely can't be found. And I just fell, fell in love with this knife. And I thought I'd, uh, I don't know, thought I'd share it with you. So I kind of treated it myself. Um, I gave $200 for this knife. Uh, the blank... I found the blank, and I think the blank uh, at a Alabama Damascus was around $75. But anyway, Koi formed this, and he handmade his handy-dandy sheath. Isn't that nice? So, today, Koi is back up at the flea market, and in hopes of not losing this knife, I kind of had an idea of something that I wanted him to make for me. I asked him to make a lanyard for me. I think that's the right word. A lanyard. Be like a tassel. Better, lack of a better word, that hangs off of this. Um, and he got my, I gave him my telephone number and he has, I have his, he has mine. Anyway, he called me yesterday and he said he had one made for me. So I'm going to get on Killer Mo, right up to the flea market, get my lanyard. Come on, go with me. I'm going to leave the babies here. I, I, I didn't want to go anyway. I had a hard night up last night. You had a hard night up last night. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you know what I'm trying to say and stuff. Security detail at night. I was checking all the windows and doors and stuff. I thought I heard something outside. I wasn't able to go back to sleep. Well, I'll leave the air conditioning on for you, buddy. You're nice and safe here. We got neighbors watching the place for us. And you'll be you'll be good to go. I don't need nobody to watch you after me. Well, the more eyes, the better. So, I'll be back in a little bit. Baby Maybay, she's been sitting there watching me the whole time make this video. Martini Lynn. Martinis, where you at? Oof.
There she is. I'm right here. Were you sleeping? What do you think? Okay, babies. Well, I'm going to leave y'all here, and I'll be back as soon as I can. I think I'll take baby May May with me. Yeah. And ride the motorcycle? I do. I do. This has been the best money I spent in a long time. I could have used this thing a hundred times before I had one. And just like that, baby May May has a place to ride. I, I like to ride. Yeah, I know you'd rather ride on my on my lap. But we're gonna we got a good we got a long ways to go and we're gonna be at highway speeds. So you just stay in there, okay? Okay. She's got good ventilation. And she can see out. Let me open this up so she can see out the top. Or I can do the whole thing and she can poke her head out, but I think I'll leave it like this. Are you in there, baby May May? I'm right here. Okay. You know me, I always gotta have a, a dog with me. At least one. You good? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Well, we made it. It took us 45 minutes or so, baby May May. We're gonna have to find us a shortcut. How'd you do back there? I didn't hear a peep from you. Woo! <laughs> look at that hair! Look at that hair! It's the I don't care hair. Yeah, look at that baby. Let's go see, let's go find Koi. Let's go find Koi. Yeah. I didn't know he was going to be here today. I think we know this guy, baby May Mays. Who, who is that? She recognizes you. You get a kissy? You seen Koi yet? Who? Koi, the knife maker? No, he's over there somewhere. What you got? Fishing rod. A dollar. A dollar? A dollar. Uh -huh. All right, I didn't know you was gonna be here. All right, a lot of people brought their dogs today. Yeah, you guys are okay. <laughs> oh, there you go, buddy. There you go. Oh, you had him around the neck. Yeah, I had him. I think there's a, a Yorkie. Here's Koi. Here's Koi. Hey, Mr. Coy. How's it going? Good. You show you new knives today. Oh, I sold several. There's one that's kind of similar. That's pretty. Oh, this one. A little smaller than mine. That's gorgeous. That's gorgeous. Well, if you got that lanyard, you might hold in here for a second. All right, all right. I didn't use that same. Uh, Material that we laced it with. Okay. And I tell you why, it's not very strong. It's strong enough for the lace. Yes, sir. But on something like this, you want to get this thing adjusted to where you, when you put your hand through it, you pull this up like that. Yes, sir. There, let it wheel. Sets you up here. Thank you for holding baby this mamas. Is, this is a whole lot stronger leather than that other. 30 year knife maker right here. Yeah. <laughs> I may not use the full length there. But the, no, I made it <laughs> much longer. You don't need it anywhere near that line. Yeah, you know, start stitching. Here, go ahead. Okay, you get it. To where you can get your hand through it comfortably or right about there. Yes, sir. And then you take, tie a knot. 
This is a hard knot. Okay. Is lanyard the right word? Yeah, lanyard. That's what they call it. All At right. least that's the only thing I've known they've hired for. <laughs> because right. it is the way. I appreciate it. So this is a little bit smaller. I actually had a piece of uh, this left over that I put up here in this little knife. What it's do you a get? very expensive wood. It's a forty-five dollar bill for a little rectangular block of that. How much is this knife here, Mr. Coy? That one's one fifty. That's beautiful. It's okay. Now then, once you get that, and actually, if you take this home and soak it, you can get that knot much Tighter. smaller. Yeah. But okay. then you just take it. Uh, uh, trim off the rest. You just trim off usually about that much of it. I pick up a dull knife on the table. You say you used to make your own blades, but now you just... Yeah, I don't have them. That's a lot of work forging oh, these blades. Yeah. I got too damn old to do it. It's a... My I'll... doctor actually made me quit. I love my knife. Yeah. Okay, now then, when you get ready to skin a deer or elk, you All right. put your hand through there, then you pull this up like that. Okay. And, and then you can skin, and uh, actually, once you, instead of laying your knife down trying to find it again, out there it is. Booty, you just leave it hanging on your wrist like that. And okay. And then you can go right back to cutting, and that's why they make a lanyard. Hello. Thank you, Mr. Coy. Uh, this, uh, like I said, once you wet this leather and kind of ready to, it ready together to like that until the leather dries. Okay, I will I'll start walking Just put a clamp or something on it, and these will stay straight. They won't be all over the place. But you, you, all you need to do is soak that leather for about uh, all right. uh, I'll do it. 30 seconds, and that's it. And then tighten that knot up real tight. Yes, sir. It makes that leather a lot more flexible when it's down. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Yeah, Thank you're you. You're welcome. Yeah, I appreciate you buying. <laughs> yeah. Well, I want to thank Mr. Coy for giving me that lanyard. But uh, yeah, that's one of the. It's a huge regret in my life. Huge mistake, losing my daddy's knife. And uh, this knife that I've got, there's not anybody to hand it down to. But if I'm gone. Maybe a good friend of mine will get it. They'll appreciate it as much as me. All right. Well, that's going to make today's video. So I'm going to end this one where? Right here. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you guys so much for watching my videos. Hey, we'll see you again soon. And you guys take care. And as always, I give God the glory for my life. Jesus Christ, he's my savior. See you next time. Bye-bye.